Welcome, church. It is so good to be together again today. I am so excited about sharing the word of God with you. But before I go into the word of God, let me pray to ask the Lord to bless our time together. Lord Jesus, would you bless our time together as we seek to know you better and to get an understanding of your word in Jesus name? Amen. There is a phrase that I've heard over and over throughout the years, and it is, God is good all the time. Do you believe it? God is good. And matter of fact, there is a song that has been written by Don Mowing, and it is called God is good all the time. I want to share a few verses from that song. It goes like this. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. God is good all the time. And he put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good. Yes, he is all the time. Through the darkest nights, his light will shine. God is good. Yes, he is. God is good all the time. Do you believe it? Do you believe that God is good all the time? Well, let me ask you a question. Is God good all the time? What about when you're in pain? Is God good when you're in pain? What about when you're having some conflict that's going on in your life? Is God good during conflict? What about when you are depressed or you're going through a time of depression? Is God good when you're stressed out, when you're worried, when you're under attack, or perhaps you have some anxiety? Is God really good all the time? So today I want to talk to you about the goodness of God. Turn with me to Psalms 100 verses 5 from the Living Bible. The Lord is always good. He is always loving and kind and his faithfulness goes on and on to each exceeding generation. See, the Bible is saying God is good all the time. Jesus declared that there is no one good except God alone. He said that God is light and in him there is no darkness. So what does it mean when we say that God is good? It means that God always acts in according to what is right, what is true and good on your behalf. You see, God has no evil in him. His intentions and his motivations are always good. He always does what is right for us and the outcome of his plans is always good. That reminds me of Jeremiah 29, 11, for it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declared the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. See, God's plans are always good. God's plans are always out of his goodness for you. So today, I want to show you why focusing on God's goodness is so important to your life. Because when you forget to focus on God's goodness, it causes all kinds of stress. It brings all kinds of difficulties in your life. See, the lack of focusing on God's goodness is a major cause of our day-to-day -day stress. Now, there are some negative consequences that happens when we forget to focus on the goodness of God. And what happens is that we take our eyes off from God and we put our eyes on our circumstances. We put our eyes on our problems. And when you're always focusing on your problems, it's going to cause your heart to be overwhelmed. It's going to cause you to be full of stress and anxiety. So, but when we turn that focus off of ourselves and put that focus on God and begin to remember the goodness of God, then we can move forward. So what I want to do, let's look at what happens when you and I forget God's goodness. I want to give you three negative consequences. Now, number one, I stop asking God for help. Now that's a real big problem because when you forget how eager God is to help you, and how good God is, you will stop depending on him 
as your source of help. When you start depending on yourself, you stop asking God for things in prayer. But here's the good news. God wants to help you. God is waiting to help you. Over 20 times in the Bible and in the New Testament, it tells us to ask. We're commanded in Matthew chapter seven, verses seven, it says, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. See what he said, if you're asking, if you're seeking, he says, you're going to find me. In other words, he says, if you're praying, I'm going to answer. If you're knocking at the door and you're asking God to open up the door, he says, that door is going to be open. The Bible says that you have not because you ask not over and over and over again. Some of the things that we don't have in our life is simply because we forget to ask God or we forget to go before the Lord because we're more self-reliant on what we can do instead of asking God to help us. See, God wants you to ask him for whatever you need in prayer. I don't care how small the situation is or how large the situation, God wants us to always come before him and begin to ask him for the needs that are in our life. In Luke chapter 11, verses 13, Jesus says this, if you as an imperfect parent know how to give good gifts to your own children, how much more would your heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask him? What we're learning through this passage is that God knows how to give good gifts to his own children. See, as a parent, when our kids begin to cry, you run, you drop, run to them. You make sure that they are right. You want to make sure that they don't hurt. And you know, there's a cry that's kind of a little soft cry where you're like, oh, it's nothing really wrong. But there is a cry that a child can have and it will send a mother running. And so when we cry out to the Lord, the father God is the same way. When he finds out that you're hurting, he's running to you. When he finds out that you need strength, he's there to give you strength. When you need hope, whatever it is, when God hears your cry, when he hears you cry out to him, he's there to answer. And he knows how to give you good gifts. He doesn't want to withhold those good gifts from you. He wants to bless you and he wants you to be blessed abundantly. Hebrews chapter four, verse 16 says this. So let us come boldly to, to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. So he's telling us to come boldly. You don't have to come as a little coward, but you can come boldly before the throne of God. In other words, you can come with a full confidence that God is going to hear you, that God is going to hear what you have to say. And then it tells us when we come boldly, we're going to find the mercy. God has mercy for us. He is a merciful God, meaning that we can come to God when we mess up. There's some times that we have messed up in our life. And sometimes we want to shrink back because we say, oh, well, uh, I don't, uh, I'm not sure if God's going to answer my prayer or not because I did this or I did that. It says you will find mercy. Not only would you find mercy, but you're going to find grace. And that's God's unmerited favor. In other words, God will never stop loving you because he is a good God. He's good and he's gracious. So therefore we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Now I'm reminded of what David had to say in Psalm 69 verses 16. David says, answer me, O Lord, out of the goodness of your love. David was saying, I, answer me, God, but I need you to answer me out of the goodness of your love. Answer me out of that good place. In other words, David said, God, don't answer me out of anger, God, but answer me out of a place of goodness of your love. So he wanted God to answer him. Everything that God does for you, through you and to you and in you, he does because he is a good God. In other words, it comes, like David said, it comes out the goodness of God's love. God's goodness to you, I, I want you to listen now. It is not based on your goodness, but it's totally based 
on the goodness of God. In other words, you can't clean yourself up enough. You can't make things right enough. See, the goodness of God is something that God extends to us in the, because of his love for us. He does not withhold his goodness from us. He loves us that much. Now, when I forget God's goodness, number two, I stop trusting God in difficult times. In good times and bad times, we have to trust that God will take care of us. Every time you have a need, you should automatically talk to God about it. It should become second nature. It should be natural to talk to God about your problems. Anytime you have a need in your life, go to God, go running to the father and don't put God second place, but make him first place. You want to try, sometimes we want to try to solve our problems. Instead of trying to solve your problems, go to God first. Make him first place. You ask God first. And and how do you go to God? So some of us are even afraid to go to God. But how do you go to God? You go to God and just say simply, Lord, I need help. I need you. I need you on my job. I need you in my marriage. I need you in my health. I need you in my relationship. So whatever you're needing from the Lord, you're able to go to God and say, God, I need you. So the father, all he wants you to do is to ask him. If you begin to ask the father, he will answer you. You just go to him instantaneously at an instant. Soon as something happened, you go to God. Make him be your first choice, the first place in your life when you have a need. I know sometimes we like to pick up a phone. We like to call a friend and discuss our issues. And that's okay to have somebody pray to come alongside you and commit to praying with you with your problems. But you want to make sure that you are going to the Lord. You are taking your problems. You're taking your issues. You're taking your concerns to the Lord God Almighty. He's able to do things that man cannot do. He said, with man, these things are impossible. With God is not impossible. In other words, God can answer you at the point of your need. If it's difficult, God can answer you. If it's impossible, God works in the impossible. He's a God that can meet us at the point of our needs. Psalm 16 verses one through two says this. It says, protect me, God because I trust in you, you are my Lord, and every good thing I have comes from you. Now, I don't want you to forget that. I don't want you to forget that every good thing that you have right now, you might not have everything that you want, life might not be going the way that you want it to go, but I want you to remember that every good thing that you have it comes from the Lord. Now, every blessing that you have comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. And let us not forget that everything that good that we have, that we have ownership of, uh, the good things that are happening, that are going in our life, the favor, everything that we have comes from the Lord. Romans chapter five, verses three says this, Paul was talking and Paul said this, we can have joy even in our troubles because we know that these troubles are good for us because they are producing patience and character and hope. So Paul was saying, listen, even in our trials, even in our troubles, we can still rejoice because uh, they're going to produce something in our life. They're producing patience. They're producing character. They're producing hope. Every time we go through something and God answer us, it builds our faith. And then the next time you go through something, your hope, you have begin to have hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so even when things are going wrong, you can have joy in your troubles. Why? Because we know that these troubles that we're having in in our life are good for us. They are producing patience and they are building character and hope. Even in the bad times, God is good. Even in the bad time, God has a good purpose. He has a good plan. He has a good reason for it. Even in difficult times, I want to sing like the song say, God is good all the time. Yes, God is good all the time. Now let's go to Romans chapter eight, verses 28. 
And it says, and we know this in everything God works for the good of those who love him and are called according to his good purpose. Means that everything that we go through, God works together for our good, even times that are tough. And I know there's some times that we're going to go through. And right now we're going through a very tough time right here in America. It's a scary time. It's a difficult time, but God is going to even take that and work it together for our good. I know that he has a good purpose, a good plan, and he is working it out for our good. Not everything that happens to us in our life is good. There's a lot of bad that's around us. God has even taken, he will even take the bad and then he will bring the good out of the bad circumstances that you're going through. And he does that so that you can trust him, so that you can hope in the father, so that you can rely on the father of God, so that you will know that he is faithful, that God is able to take something out of the ashes and bring it to life and and create something that is beautiful. So, but when I forget God's goodness, I become pessimistic about the future. So when you forget how good God really is, you become pessimistic about the future. In other words, what happens to you, you lose hope. See, our hope is based on the goodness of God. If God isn't good, we have no hope. And Psalms 27 verses 13 says this, I, this is the psalmist speaking. He says, David, he says, I remain confident in this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Then he says, wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart and wait for the Lord. So David was saying, listen, I know. And my expectation is that I am going to see the goodness of the Lord, not when I go on to glory, but he says, I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So that is the hope that he had from the Lord Jesus Christ, that God was going to bless him. And then he tells us to be strong, take heart and wait on the Lord. So what I see in that passage of scripture that God does not always answer us instantaneously. There are going to be times where we're going to have to wait on God. So I want you to make a decision today that you are going to wait on the Lord to answer. In other words, you're not going to get go before God. You're not going to get in a hurry. You're not going to get in a rush, but you're going to wait on the Lord to answer you. Most of the problems in life comes from your inability to have delayed gratification. In other words, we want it right now at an instance. And sometimes I just came to tell you, we're going to just have to wait. Remember the previous scripture where it says that it is going to produce patience. It's going to produce hope. Those are the things that God produced in our life. David had hope in God. And I want you to remember that you can have hope in the same God that David served. We have a God that is sure He is a sure thing. He's not a God that's a God today, that he's good today and tomorrow he's a bad God. No, he's constantly good so we can hope in him. So hope is the anticipation of God's goodness. I want to give you that definition. Hope is the anticipation of God's goodness. I remember when the scripture says, hope make it not a shame, meaning that when we hope in God, not in ourselves, but when we hope in God, you're never going to be put to shame. So I want to give you nine different benefits of God's goodness to you. Because God is good, he will meet my needs when I'm worried. That comes from Psalms 23 verses one. The Lord is my shepherd. I will like nothing. God will meet my needs when I am worried. When you're worried about a situation or a problem in your life, go to God. He's going to meet your needs and look to the Lord. And matter of fact, look with anticipation that God is going to answer you because God is good. Number two, he will teach me to relax 
relax when I am in stress. Psalms 23 verses two, he making me to lie down in green pastures and he leading me besides the still water. We can relax. He said, he make it me rest in him. He maketh me lie down in green pasture and he leads me besides the still water. So God is going to teach you how to relax. When you're stressed out, go to the Lord. When you cast all your cares upon the Lord, when you call upon the name of the Lord God, when you go before him, do you know just the process of going and telling God and laying at his feet will cause your stress to be lifted? So God will teach you how to relax when you're in stress. Number three, because God is good, he will replenish my strength when I am empty. He will restore my soul. uh, Psalms 23 verses three, God will restore my soul. He will cause you to have strength. He will cause you to be refreshed when you're empty, when you're parched, when you don't have any more. Go to the Lord at his well. It never runs dry. You can drink from God's well and then you can be replenished. He will cause you to be replenished every single time when we go to the Father. Number four, because God is good, he will guide me when I am confused. Psalm 23, uh, verse 3b, the latter part of that verse, it says, he guides me in the right path for his name's sake. Oh, wow, that is good. When God, when we can get some guidance from the Lord, God will always guide us when we're in a place of confusion. Let me tell you this. When you're in a place where you're confused, ask the Lord for guidance. The word of God tells us if a man or woman like it wisdom to ask of the Lord, that wisdom is there paused and ready for us and awaiting us to just ask. So when you're confused and you need some guidance, you need some instructions, you need some direction, go to the Lord. He's there because he's good. He wants to bless you. He wants to make sure that you have the kind of direction, the kind of instructions that you need to be successful in your life. Because God is good, he will walk with me in dark and fearful days. Psalms 23 verses four, even though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. What is saying that God is with us. I told you last week, the father God is with us every step of the way. You're going through some hard times right now. You're going through some difficult situations. Yeah, it's very fearful right now. A lot of us are overwhelmed with fear. God is with us. He's going to walk you through those dark seasons. He's going to walk you right through those valleys, through that valley, that valley of the shadow of death. God is going to be with with you. He promised to never leave us nor forsake us. He promised not to abandon us right where we are. So God is not going to abandon you during the hard seasons, but God is going to walk with you. As a matter of fact, I, I saw a, a picture. I think it was a postcard. And on this postcard, it had uh, Jesus steps going before the person and the person was literally following after the steps of the Lord. So God is going to go before you. He's going to lead the way. So you don't have to have fear. You don't have to fret. God is with you every single time because God is good. He will protect me when I feel insecure. When we have no security, When we feel insecure, when we feel like, God, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. I don't know whether I'm going to have a job. A lot of us are going through that right now, whether we're going to have a job next week, whether we're going to have a job next month. And it caused some insecurities in our heart. But the Bible tells us in Psalms 23 verses four, it says your rod and your staff, they will comfort me. God's rod and staff will comfort. He's a God that knows how to comfort us in the time of need in our life. And so he's going to protect you during that time. He's going to protect your peace. Not only your peace, he is a God that provides. He knows how to provide the needs that you have in your life. And so even if you lose your job, we're going to have to trust the Lord as our source He will be our source. He will supply all of our needs, not just some, but he's going to supply all of our needs.
<laughs> Number seven, because God is good, he will publicly show his favor on my life. Psalms 23 verses five, I love this one. He prepares a banquet for me in the presence of all of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil and my cup overflow. That's talking about the favor and the goodness of God. God knows how to cause you to have favor and know how to bless you and to position you in a place of the blessings. He knows how to publicly show uh, put favor on your life. And so we are to expect the favor of God to go before us. You are to expect to raise. You are to be, expect to be recognized for uh, the job that you're doing. And if you're doing a good job, somebody may not recognize your talents or your skills, but God knows how to exalt you in front of men because of the favor of God. May the blessings and the favor of God go before you. Number eight, because God is good, he will be good to me no matter what happens. Psalms 23 verses 6a, he says, surely your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life, regardless to what happens. God is going to be with you. He's going to follow you all the days of your life. No matter what happens in your life, God is going to be there. You can be assured of that, that goodness surely says your goodness and your love is going to follow me. What great confidence that we have in the Father God when we know that his goodness and his love is following us throughout our life that God is not gonna ever cease to not love us. He's not gonna ever cease to be good to us, that God is good all the time. Number nine, because God is good, he will take me to heaven one day. That is the future hope that we have in him. And it says in Psalms 23 verses 6b, and it says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's going to be our dwelling place to love him, we come to know him, we have eternal security in the Father God. And that is heaven. That's one of the greatest gifts that God has for us. And he says, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And I just want to tell you, because of the goodness of God and because God is so good, God wants you to be strengthened. God wants you to be encouraged. He wants you to have uh, the life substance. He wants all of your needs to be met. He wants to cause your fears and your worries to cease. He wants to heal all of your hurts. Jesus says this. He says, I have come that you may have life and have it to the fullest for I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd lays his life down for his sheep. I want you to remember that Jesus Christ, he is now declaring that he is the good shepherd. And when he talks about being the good shepherd, he's talking about going to the cross and making that sacrifice for us. He went to the cross and he did it for you and I, and that was because he loved us. He saw through eternity and throughout time that you were gonna be on the scene today. So today we wanna give you an opportunity to receive him as Lord and savior of your life. He wants to be your father. He wants to be your good shepherd. He wants to be your friend. So if you wanna make a decision for Jesus Christ, I'm gonna ask you to just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I know that you died upon the cross for me and you was resurrected again and you did it all for me. And so God, I thank you for coming into my life. In Jesus' name, amen. You, if you're listening to me right now, and if you made a decision for Jesus Christ, would you just hit the decide button that's on that screen and say, hey, I made a decision for Jesus Christ. And if perhaps you are, you're here and you're looking and you said, well, I came and I heard a word and I have a word of encouragement, but I uh, today and I'm strengthened by the word of God. Let us know, put it in the comments, how you were blessed by the word of God. And perhaps you're here and you say, well, pastor, I need some prayer. We have prayer parties 
partners that are standing and they're ready, paused and ready to pray for you. There's a button that's on the screen that you can push and those prayer partners, they are ready to pray for you. And it is confidential. Nobody else will know it's between you and the prayer partner. So that we want you to have your needs met. And we pray that today that you were blessed. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you to the fullness in Jesus name. We'll see you again next week. God bless you.